Welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Warren. I am a banker here in London and a property investor across the UK. My goal is to live free and independently from property. So I'm looking for an income of £3,000 per month from property. If that's what you want to like, subscribe, that is what my channel is all about. So guys, the whole point of doing property is to make an income and get money. And that's why you've seen me over the years evolve and pivot from regular buy to let strategy into high yielding, high returning strategies such as service accommodation and BRRR. What is BRRR? It stands for buy, refurbish, refinance and rent. It's basically when you target a property at ideally below what it's worth, you do it up, you refurb it, uplift its value, you refinance and you pull out some, or if you're lucky, but very rare these days, all of the cash that you invested, and then you retain it because you remortgaged it, you pulled out some money, but you're retaining the property, and then renting it out over the long term, you still own it to make a return through rent. Yeah. So really you've got two chunks of money. You've got that initial chunk of money that you pull out when you refinance after you've refurbed it and uplifted the value. And you've got that long stretch of return, which is lower, but still consistent over time through renting it out. That is BRRR in a nutshell. I did a BRRR. How many times can I say that without sounding like a pirate in Manchester not so long ago? Stick around to the end, guys. I'm gonna show you a clip of the numbers, just the straight maths in terms of what I spent, what I made, and how I was able to refinance and make my return of just under 25,000 pound cash, which I then used to reinvest in other projects. And what I really wanna do is recap and talk through how I managed to make just under 25,000 pound return from doing a BRRR property in Manchester. So guys, as I alluded to at the beginning of the video, BRRR strategy in property is great because of the high returns that you get. It's big money, guys, if you do it right. But as we're gonna see, I'm gonna break down how to do it and really show you what to look out for, right? Because returns are big, but it is high risk, guys. You can quite easily have your returns wiped out by for example, having a property come in at a lower value once you've refurbed it than what you initially expected by having you know the refurb works go on for longer than expected, builder delays, cost overruns, all of that could blow a significant chunk, if not all of your returns out of the water. That's why it's really, really important to do it the right way. And I'm gonna teach you how in this video. So let's take a look at the key steps of a BRRR. And I'm gonna use my example of doing one in Manchester First of all, the key steps are that you need to get the property under what it's worth, under market value. Why guys? To give you margin for profit and to maximize your profit. The cheaper that you can buy the property for and the more that you can uplift its value. So the bigger the gap between those two amounts, the bigger your return is going to be. If you buy at close to or at the market value, it doesn't matter how much refurb works and value add you do to it, it's already at the market value. So you could do 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 pounds worth of works to it, but it's not gonna increase the value by that much because you've already bought it at market value. There is a ceiling. So that is a fundamental golden key first rule of the BRRR property strategy, guys, and that is to buy it at as far below the market value as possible. Secondly, guys, is to target a return. I said at the beginning that there was a time um, although it's rare where you could pull all of your money back out of a property. So when I say all of your money, I'm talking about your deposit. I'm talking about your legal costs, your refer costs, your finance costs. If that margin, that uplifting value is big enough, you can pull all that money out. I think that is pretty much a thing of the past, unless you know you're getting some peacock unicorn properties in parts of the UK. I'm not saying that they don't exist, but what I am saying is that they're a lot more rare and especially in a market when property prices are going down instead of going up, it's easier to do the BRR strategy in a rising property market rather than one in which it's stagnant or falling, which is what we're in right now. I typically try to target at least 25% of my original investments. So say all in, I'm spending 50 grand. 25% of 50 grand is 12,500 pounds, right? I'm gonna target at least 12,500 pounds, ideally more. Just for context, what it's worth, my return on my BRRR property up in Manchester was 35%. So basically a third of my money I got back, which I think is really good for your first ever one. And I'm gonna grow on that. The next one I'm gonna target 50%. I don't really wanna go below 35%. I said, you know, 25% is what I target, but you know, I've 
gone in at 35% and I'm all about continuous improvement. So I wanna go onwards and upwards. So what you gotta ask yourself is, what is your target return gonna be? And to do that, you wanna be very meticulous with your numbers. Check out my video that I'm gonna to link to this video at the end, where I go through step by step my numbers in terms of all of my outlays, the refurb costs, how the returns work, and basically all the maths. You wanna do the same, so take screenshots of that video, plug in the numbers yourself and work out your returns using that. Okay, so we've got buying it under market value, we've got targeting a return, so getting all of your numbers right. Next one, guys, is another fundamental, central key step, and that is getting a good builder. A good builder, guys, is key. I cannot stress this enough. If you have a bad builder, I'm talking about a builder who doesn't show up when he's supposed to, who overruns in terms of time and costs, who's unreliable, incompetent, it can absolutely ruin the whole project, guys. And so we don't have the capacity. You really want to go by ideally recommendations. You want to get in touch and find landlords, okay, in the same area who've used good builders and who can recommend them to you and be like, use this guy. He's done several projects for me. I trust him, he'll do a good job for you. That's really the ideal scenario. Now, not all of us know landlords. Me, personally, I didn't know a landlord. I did arts, but you know, landlords can be a bit stingy when it comes to sharing their builders. It's a weird one. They get a bit funny like that. So my fallback was to do my research. I did a lot of research on forums, on the good old internet and I interviewed builders. Again, I've got another video, so check that one out, where I go through my interview process. I interviewed five builders, or I plan to interview five builders on the day and chose from there, guys. But you really want to be meticulous. You don't want to cut any corners, and you really want to go over your gut when it comes to meeting them and your rapport with them and the impression that you get of them. Does this person seem like a reliable, trustworthy, professional person? All of that, trust your gut, guys. I know for a lot of us, it's new territory, and you'd be like, how can I trust my gut if I don't know what I'm doing? But trust me, just trust your gut, okay? <laughs> and then lastly, guys, is managing a BRRR property project. So, I told you, and I say at the beginning of all of my videos, I live in London, but I invest up north. This project that I did in Manchester, where I got a return of 25,000 pounds, was 250 miles away. So I managed it from London in Manchester. Now, how do you do this? Again, there are ways to do this, guys, but, in a nutshell, what you want to do is set up a system with your builder whereby you are paying them in stages when they complete certain milestones. So I'm talking about doing sort of like the rip out, so ripping out, or if it's going to be, you know, a medium to comprehensive refurb, say for example, you're getting a new kitchen, new bathroom fitted, the rip out, you want to pay them after, after they've done that. You then want to pay them at the next stage. That might be completion of the first fix, plumbing, the first fix, electrics. Then after they've done the plastering, and then after they've installed the kitchen, installed the bathroom, then the flooring, and then the painting. Do you get my drift? So you don't ever, guys, and write this down, you don't ever want to pay your builders everything up front because basically you're over a barrel and you're really in their hands as to whether they even finish the job, let alone complete it to the timescales you've agreed because there's no incentive for them to. When you stage your payments, they obviously want to get paid the rest, so they're going to do the work. They know, okay, I get paid when I do the work. I get paid when I do the work. I get paid when I do the work. You pay them up front. They're like, well, I've already been paid. I'll do the work when I want, you know? And I've seen projects that was supposed to be two, three months, go on for like six, nine months, or not even at all, right? I've seen it happen, guys. So pay your builder in stages, especially if you're far away. Do that whether it's around the corner or far away, but I also get them to send pictures, right? So send me videos and pictures of what you say you've completed so I can actually see that it's done. If it's not done and I can't see it, if you don't send me pictures or videos, you're not getting paid, right? And if it becomes an issue, shake hands, thank you for your time, you move on and you find another builder. That's really how you do it guys, in a nutshell. And as I said, I did a previous video about my numbers. I'm gonna play the final part of the video right now so you can really see in terms of maths, straight up maths, how I managed to achieve a 25,000 pound return on my BRRR property project in Manchester. Enjoy. So as we can see, the total cost for this BRRR refurbishment property was £69,273. I bought this property for £127,000 and I got bridging finance at 75%. So the 
lending that I took out on this originally was £95,250. Now once the refurbishment was done after three months, what you do is you get a new valuation done and that's going to inform the new lender, the new mortgage lender, how much they're going to be willing to lend you based on the new valuation. Now the new valuation came in on this refurbishment property at £160,000. The new mortgage lender was willing to lend me 75% of that, so that's £120,000. That £120,000, which is a lending from the new lender, is gonna to go to pay off the original bridging finance that you can see here, of £95,250 and then the remainder, the £24,750 is profit which comes to me. That is my profit on this deal guys, £24,750 into my bank account and that works out to a return of just under 36%. So guys, that is the story of how I made just under 25 grand doing a BRRR project in Manchester. I'm really excited to do more over the coming years. It's a strategy that really excites me. Yes, it's high risk. Yes, it's complex. Yes, it can be stressful, but the rewards are great if done right. Guys, thanks as always for supporting this channel. Please like and subscribe. Most importantly, share this video, this page, this channel with other people because that's how I grow and I'll see you guys on the next one.